Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our Neonatal Procedural Skills Series, we'll discuss needle thoracentesis. Airleak, otherwise known as a pneumothoraces, in the neonatal population can be a deadly situation. Neonates also have many risk factors that contribute to air leak. These include, but are not limited to, respiratory distress syndrome, mechanical ventilation, sepsis, pneumonia, aspiration of meconium, blood, or amniotic fluid, or a congenital malformation. In addition, spontaneous pneumothoraces can occur in 1-2% to of otherwise normal appearing neonates. In the NICU and on transport, the staff must be prepared to diagnose and treat pneumothoraces in a timely manner. Because of the close proximity of vital structures, supple chest wall, and frail lung tissue, a firm understanding of the anatomy of the chest is imperative. You must realize that the chest contains two lungs and the mediastinal organs and vessels. Both the mediastinum and the chest are lined with two sets of pleura, the visceral and the parietal. The parietal pleura lines the chest wall and the thoracic side of the diaphragm. A continuation of the parietal pleura surrounds the heart and mediastinum. The visceral pleura surrounds the lungs. The primary function of the pleura is protective. In other words, it prevents the lungs from rubbing against the ribs and other organs, avoiding damage by friction, and therefore providing a barrier to infection by sealing one cavity from another. In addition, because each lung has a separate set of pleura, it helps prevent both lungs from collapsing if air enters into one side. Now there's a moistened space between these two pleura, which is known as the pleural cavity. Because of this space, the pleura ride atop each other like two pieces of plastic wrap that have been stuck together with a thin film of liquid. With the right circumstances though, air, blood, chyle, or exudate can enter between the two layers. Neonates have little compensatory reserve when they develop a pneumothorax. Therefore, the NICU staff must be able to quickly and accurately assess a patient in respiratory distress. When this happens, a cascade of signs and symptoms are found upon physical examination, or changes in vital signs may develop. This may include increasing respiratory distress, rapid breathing, grunting, nasal flaring, and chest wall retractions. If a tension pneumothorax has occurred, a patient may be tachycardic, bradycardic, hypotensive, or even cyanotic. Upon auscultation, breath sounds could be decreased over the affected side. In addition, heart sounds may be distanced or muffled or shifted to the opposite side of the pneumothorax with a concurrent shift in the point of maximal impulse. A quick, non-invasive technique to assess for pneumothoraces is transillumination of the chest wall. In this instance, a cool light source is placed against the side of the chest wall with the pneumothorax. The light illuminates or radiates across the chest as seen here, rather than simply forming a halo around the light source. Conclusive evidence for a pneumothorax in the neonate is a chest x-ray. If the neonate has a pneumothoraces, the chest x-ray film will demonstrate air in the pleural space. This air on chest x-ray will appear dark black in the areas where the air is present. In addition, the lung on the affected side will be reduced in size. The heart and the mediastinal contents may be shifted as well. A pneumothorax can be treated in several ways, and if small, non-invasive measures may be considered. But if there is a large or tension pneumo, the first treatment of choice is needle thoracentesis. Equipment and supplies needed include cleanser for the skin per unit policy, an 18 gauge IV catheter, preferably non-safety, a T-site connector, three-way stopcock, a 5 ml and a 20 ml syringe, as well as gauze. You may also opt for Tegaderm to secure the catheter in place. Next, you'll want to choose your landmark. With affected side up, you'll choose the fourth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. Placing your patient affected side up cannot be overemphasized as it helps the air to rise as seen in this lateral decubitus. If not emergent and time permits, be sure to premedicate prior 
to performing your needle thoracentesis. As you prepare mentally to place the needle, remember you will be sliding over the top of the rib, not underneath, in order to avoid the neurovascular bundle. Now that patient is in the correct position with affected side up, you can prep your IV catheter. If it is non-safety, remove the back end as seen here, and then place the 5 ml syringe to use during placement. You'll now want to cleanse your site in a circular motion using hospital approved cleanser such as chloroprep. You'll then take a sterile gauze as seen here to cleanse and mark the site. Again, fourth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. You now take your IV catheter, bevel up, syringe attached. Locate your landmark once again. Go through the skin at a 45 degree angle and then angle up to a 90 degree angle. You would now advance the needle and the catheter while pulling negative pressure on the syringe. You stop advancing when you get air in the syringe. At this point, you advance the catheter and remove the needle. While holding catheter steady, you remove the 5 ml syringe and attach the three-way stopcock attached to the T site and 20 ml syringe. It is at this point that you make sure that the stopcock is turned off to the atmosphere and onto the patient. You then begin withdrawing air from the patient's chest. You will turn off to the patient and onto the atmosphere, pushing the air out, measuring each amount. You can then repeat by turning off to the atmosphere, withdrawing air from the patient's chest, turning off to the patient, and pushing that air back out to the atmosphere. You can repeat this process as often as needed to remove the air from the patient's chest. Throughout the procedure, you will want to perform cardiopulmonary monitoring and assess the patient before and after the procedure is completed. You should also consider getting a chest x-ray at this time to ensure the pneumo has resolved or if you need to move on to a chest tube. You may consider adding tegaderm at this time or steri strips in order to hold the catheter in place for transport or until it is decided to escalate your air evacuation strategy. Besides being able to have a larger bore than a butterfly and to easily transport utilizing an IV catheter, another advantage is that you do not have a hard needle left in the chest and it is literally the first step to placing a pigtail catheter because the wire, as seen here, can go through that 18-gauge IV catheter. Now it's your turn for needle thoracentesis using an IV catheter. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.